the dust has definitely settled on what was, I suppose, a, an odd game, Alan. I suppose a frustrating one from the supporters' point of view, from, definitely from Italy and from Ireland as well. From an Irish point of view, though, for the players who really wanted to stand out here, think of the likes of Robbie Henshaw, Pete O'Mahony, James Lowe, who want to get themselves into the side against England. Do you think they were able to do that today? It was difficult, Tommy. Um, obviously, with the, 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 the sending off and it going to un uncontested scrums and Italy being reduced to 13 players then through the laws of the game, I think people are confused by that. The laws... That well, law, we were all frustrated. Well, that, law, was but that law was brought in to yeah. stop teams from uh, doing that situation deliberately, where they, if and their we, scrum was under pressure and stuff. We've seen that against France years ago, yeah. where there was yeah. uncontested scrums and scrums gone for 100 minutes. But it was so a difficult game, and I said in commentary, you know, it, Ireland tried to play be a bit lateral at times when there was a lot of gaps in closer to the breakdown. So it was difficult for the players. But I thought Ryan Baird stepped up and he had moments in the game. Mike Lowry's two tries could have got a third one. Josh van der Fleer, who I gave player the match, that was brilliant in the first half. Doris was really good. But like you mentioned, Peter O'Mahony, Robbie Henshaw, it didn't get... You know, it was just a, a really surreal, strange situation. The atmosphere went and... Um, I would have liked Ireland, and I think everyone would have liked Ireland to be a bit more ruthless and a bit more accurate. Now, you've got to give a lot of credit to the Italians. It was desperation defence at times. They put their bodies on the line, but not really sure how much Ireland will get out of the game bar just to match practice, and uh, they got a big score in the end. Um, I think it'll be between... If, if Ireland want to favour, it'll be looking. Uh, we'll be looking for Wales or England to, to beat France and maybe bring it to points difference in the end. And that's exactly. I spoke to Andy Farrell after the game, and he said he was delighted to get that points difference because, as you say, it could come down to that. But from a coaching point of view, he would have loved to seen a bit more of a competitive game to see these guys get Everyone some would. tough, uh, tough battle, hardened minutes under their belt. You saw Johnny Sexton come on with 30 minutes to go. Were you surprised to see him come on, on so early? No, I wasn't, because I think um, I think the idea is he look he'll start against England. I think he needed some game time. The idea of starting Car Joey Carberry and giving him that opportunity, and I think he did well at times. He got a great try, started the game well. But Ireland would have been better with 15 against 15 yeah. because it just lost its shape and some decisions went against them. A few concerns for Ireland around the breakdown, an area you know um, they've been very, very accurate on uh, under under Joe Schmidt and now under Andy. You know the, the breakdown has been one of the positives, and and in recent times, in particular in November, and they lost some turnovers there, a little bit sloppy with with knock-ons and things like that. But so overall, I think um, it was just really strange. I think it's one of those ones where you just draw a line under it. You wouldn't have learned a lot out of the game. Um, and, you know, it lost its flow, through, you know, you from that point. You mentioned Joey had some good moments and some frustrating moments out there, particularly against 13 men. It's going to be difficult for him. You said Johnny's going to come in against England. Do you think that there should be a, a choice of maybe putting Joey in, give him more game time, let him build into that 10 position? Because we know what Johnny's going to bring. And yes, I know we need to win against England, but how good would it be to have Johnny Sexton coming off and clo or closing the game out with 20, 30 minutes to go. Yeah, there's an argument for that, for sure, looking ahead to the World Cup, and, and we know Johnny Sex is not going to be around Cause forever. Because uh, with Joey, do we know much more from that performance, really? Not really, no. And I think, you know, he started the game pretty brightly, and um, Ireland were quite accurate. You know, that, that first try, first couple of tries were really good, and, and there was a lot of accuracy around the breakdown. The ball was quick for Gibson Park players were running onto it. You know, there was always going to be a mistake or two. You know Italy can make it really difficult. They're competitive, really aggressive in their line speed. So Andy Farrell would have preferred to have 15 against 15 throughout the game. But it's one, you just got to move on, draw a line under it, um, be positive um, in their preparations. I think they'll be confident going in against England. Either way, we saw England um, didn't have their best performance yesterday. We're hanging on near the end. But today is just about... Um, I think it, it lot, the atmosphere died a little bit and, and the players themselves tried to be a little bit too lateral at times, try to just look for that width all the time, where I thought at times it could have been a bit more direct. But there was lots of positives, you know, it's not, it's not negative as you win by 50 points exactly, and, and, yeah. and, you know, we're not complaining. But everyone was disappointed that the way the game panned out. It was a really strange situation. Absolutely. I think that pretty much sums it up. I mean, we scored nine tries. It was a convincing win. But yeah, a lot of indecision about where this Irish team goes from there. Alan Quinn, thanks for joining us. Cheers, Tommy.